Normandy would be a pivotal battleground during the Second World War, at a time when the war was still raging and a major change in fortunes was needed for the Allied forces. It came on the beaches of northern France. History would remember the D-Day landings and the liberation of France and Western Europe from the Nazis. The beaches remember the huge casualties and sheer violence which still scar them to this day. The efforts of so many people helped create what some call the greatest armada of all times. Much is known about the struggle for ground and how many lives were lost, but there are some facts that may surprise. Nazi leader Adolf Hitler may have been seen as the real bigot of the times, but it was the way this word was used in Britain that hugely helped D-Day planning. If you knew the most sensitive details, like the date of the invasion, where it would take place, you had knowledge above top secret and you were put on a bigot list. You had a security card which had been stamped with bigots in big letters. Authorities reckoned it wasn't something that you would happily wave around. You were banned from travelling outside the UK in case you were captured and let the details slip. That is, unless you were Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the man who chose the word in the first place. Bigot actually stood for British invasion of German-occupied territory. Fantasy and reality worked side by side during the planning of D-Day, and for the German high command, at times it merged into one, a crucial intention of the British government. It created Operation Fortitude, and a man called Juan Pujol helped fabricate that deception. Codenamed Garbo, the Spaniard had already been recruited by the Germans, but secretly loathed Nazism, and was eventually picked up by MI6, and became a double agent. He helped create a network of spies that fed so much misinformation to the Germans, they decided not to continue to infiltrate the UK. Germany suspected a major invasion, but believed it would be at Pas de Calais, not Normandy. After a carefully worded message from Garbo, they believed in the FUSAG, a huge American army seemingly stationed in Kent and Essex, ready to join the invasion. The Germans held back numerous divisions, which some experts believe may have helped them win at Normandy, but instead allowed the Allied forces to make vital gains. The FUSAG was a ghost army. There was a major battle behind the scenes as cryptography played a crucial role in preparations. Code words and sentences that could be used to make orders but not be deciphered by the enemy. To help in the Allied forces' advancement through France, French resistance workers were employed in various distraction and destruction tasks. The dice is on the red carpet actually meant destroy trains and railway lines. It's hot in Suez was a call to destroy cable and telephone lines. They had to be short, easy to learn, simple enough to be effective, and in many cases, they were. Today, the heart of London beats in time to the hopes of the free world. Clues to where the Allied forces would land actually appeared in a newspaper nearly blowing the whole operation. If you had picked up one particular copy of the Daily Telegraph and had a go at the crossword, you may have guessed Overlord and Neptune, the code word for the naval part of the invasion. Utah appeared as a clue to an answer. That was one of the beaches where troops landed. It failed to have an impact, and MI5 would clear the compiler of doing anything wrong. The coincidence remained just that and unexplained. Nothing was allowed to slip, tongues were not allowed to wag, 
and for some peace of mind, army officials tested their own troops. Plain-clothed women were sent into village pubs to try and extract information from the soldiers about a top-secret assault on the Merville gun battery. The homegrown pretend spies were from the Women's Auxiliary Air Force and had been sent in by Terence Otway, the commander of the paratroop assault. The soldiers kept quiet, keeping the mission on track. Despite the huge loss of life, the Normandy landings proved a key victory for the Allied forces in their struggle against the Nazis. Five days after they landed, soldiers had secured the beaches. Paris was liberated on August the 25th and Germany surrendered in May 1945. Without the immense planning and secrecy, this would not have been possible. The war may have ended much differently, prompting a Europe that would have looked a lot different to now.